So Google just built a team of AI teams that optimize themselves, and it's terrifyingly effective. OpenAI dropped a brand new monster model called O3 Pro that's already beating Claude and Gemini on PhD level benchmarks. Sam Altman says, we've officially crossed into the era of super intelligence, what he calls a gentle singularity. Meanwhile, Meta's not sitting still. Zuckerberg is going all in, launching a secretive new lab to chase something even bigger than AGI. And he just recruited the guy behind Scale AI to lead it. Honestly, this feels like the final stretch before AI explodes into something none of us can fully control. So let's talk about it. All right, let's first talk about Google's new mass framework, because this thing might be the most underrated leap towards super intelligence we've seen so far. Here's how it works. An AI model is built to do one specific task, like solving equations, analyzing text, or generating code. When you group multiple models with different roles, you get an AI agent, a system where each model plays a part to tackle more complex problems. But what happens if you take it a step further, if you hook up a bunch of full AI agents and get them working together as one big coordinated system? That's exactly what Google's new mass framework does. It creates a team of AI teams, all synced up and tackling complex tasks, faster, smarter, and with barely any human input. Here's why this matters. Normally, if you want AI agents to work together, you need to tell each one exactly what to do and in what order. That means writing specific prompts and arranging how they interact, like choreographing a dance where one wrong move messes up the whole routine. And the crazy part is that even a tiny change in instructions can completely break the performance. That's where Mass flips the script. Instead of guessing the best prompts and agent setups, it does the hard work for you. Mass figures out which prompts and agent combinations actually lead to better results, then optimizes the entire system in three steps. Step one, it improves the prompt for each agent individually. That means each AI is fine-tuned with better instructions like think step-by-step -step or real examples to follow. Step two, it starts experimenting with different ways to connect these agents, basically building the best layout for teamwork. And instead of blindly testing every option, Mass focuses only on the setups that show real promise, cutting out wasted effort. Step three, once the layout is locked in, Mass goes back and fine tunes the prompts again, but this time it looks at the whole system. It tweaks instructions so the agents don't just work well alone, they work even better together. And the results speak for themselves. In benchmark tests like math and hot pot QA, systems optimized with mass beat out traditional multi-agent setups by a noticeable margin. Just by improving prompts, mass got 84% accuracy on math problems way ahead of systems that only added more agents. In other cases, the right layout boosted results by 3%, while the wrong setup actually made things worse, dropping accuracy by 15%. So yeah, how you design the team matters. Mass found that agent setups like debate or executor worked really well, while others like reflect or summarize actually hurt performance. That's why Mass doesn't just throw more agents at a problem, it chooses the right ones, gives them the right instructions, and connects them in the most effective way. Even better, Mass is modular. You can swap in new agents, adjust roles, and apply it across different domains. Whether you're debugging code, building step-by-step -step reasoning chains, or pulling facts from multiple sources. Bottom line, Google's Mass makes AI systems smarter, not by scaling up blindly, but by optimizing how they think and work together. It's like upgrading from a bunch of smart individuals to a championship-level team all without needing to micromanage every move. And this shift isn't just happening in research labs, it's already reshaping the job market. As systems like Mass make AI teams smarter and more independent, companies are downsizing roles that can be automated. That's why Microsoft, Amazon, and Google have laid off thousands. But at the same time, they're opening new positions, specifically for people who get this new wave of AI. People who can work with agents, build workflows, and understand how to stay relevant in a world where AI systems are optimizing themselves. That's why I've partnered with Outskill to give away free access to a two-day live AI training 
normally priced at $895. It runs this weekend, Saturday and Sunday, 11 in the morning to 7 in the evening, and it's packed with value. You'll learn how to build a full AI toolkit with over 20 tools, master prompt engineering for better outputs, automate entire workflows, analyze data without touching a single line of code, create polished presentations with AI, build real apps without coding, generate stunning AI images and videos, and even develop your own AI agents from scratch. Over 4 million people from 40 countries have already attended. My entire team is joining, and honestly, you should too. Seats are limited, so hit the link in the description and save your spot now. Also, don't miss the intro session on Friday at 10 in the morning Eastern Standard Time. All right, now, OpenAI just dropped their most powerful model yet, O3 Pro. It's the upgraded version of the O3 reasoning model they first released back in April, and now it's rolling out to ChatGPT Pro and team users. If you're on Enterprise or Edu, you'll get access in a week. And for devs, it's already live in the API. The pricing? It's $20 per million input tokens and $80 per million output tokens. Not cheap, but then again, this thing is a beast. According to OpenAI, O3 Pro outperforms everything else they've made, including the already impressive O3, and reviewers across the board have picked it as better in every single category. We're talking science, education, business, writing, programming, basically all the heavy lifting use cases. It scores higher for clarity, accuracy, instruction following, and completeness. But here's the trade-off. It's a bit slower than O1 Pro, so yeah, you're getting better quality, but it takes a little longer to generate. Now what makes O3 Pro stand out isn't just its performance in text, it can also analyze files, search the web, reason over visuals, and even run Python. It's got memory too, so it can personalize your experience. But it's not perfect. Temporary chats are currently disabled while they fix a technical issue, it can't generate images, and it doesn't work with Canvas yet. The collaborative AI space OpenAI has been pushing. Still, when it comes to benchmarks, this model is crushing it. On the AIME 2024 test, which is a math exam used to measure high-level reasoning, O3 Pro outperformed Google's Gemini 2.5 Pro. It also beat Claude 4 Opus from Anthropic on GPQA Diamond, a PhD-level science benchmark. So yeah, OpenAI is not playing around with this one. While everyone's focused on O3 Pro, there's another big announcement. Sam Altman confirmed that OpenAI's first open source model in years is delayed. It was originally expected sometime this June, but now he says it's coming later this summer. According to him, the team stumbled on something unexpected that's apparently worth the wait. No further details, just hype for now. And speaking of Altman, he's also been talking about something a lot bigger. In a blog post, he said we've already passed the event horizon of super intelligence. That's his way of saying AI isn't just improving, it's entered a new phase. He believes we're in the early stages of the singularity, not the chaotic sci-fi version, but what he calls a gentle singularity, a steady, manageable climb toward digital super intelligence. He backed that up with some serious numbers. As of May 2025, ChatGPT has 800 million weekly active users. That's almost a billion people relying on it every week for everything from coding and content creation to serious business and research tasks. Altman even said writing code will never be the same again after this year, and he's projecting even more for the next few. By 2026, he expects AI systems to start generating actual new insights, and by 2027, we might see real-world robots that can handle tasks on their own. But he's also careful to point out the risks. Even small misalignments in AI behavior, if scaled to hundreds of millions of users, could create big problems. That's why he's calling for serious global discussions right now on how we guide the development of powerful AI. He says we need to avoid centralized control, make sure these systems are aligned with humanity's long-term goals, and figure out what values should actually shape the AI we're building. And with all this going on, OpenAI is still fighting legal battles too. They're currently appealing a federal court order in a lawsuit from the New York Times, which demands they preserve all user data, including deleted chats. OpenAI says it's an overreach and that they're focused on protecting user privacy. 
And just as OpenAI pushes deeper into super intelligence, Meta is making its own massive move. Mark Zuckerberg is now personally leading the charge, launching a brand new AI research lab with one goal, super intelligence, not just AGI, but the next level beyond it. And he's not doing it quietly. He's reorganizing the company's entire AI structure to pull this off. The centerpiece of this new lab is Alexander Wang, the 28-year-old founder of Scale AI. Meta has been in serious talks to invest billions into Scale AI, not just to get access to Wang himself, but to bring over other key talent from his team. It's a power move, and it comes with massive paychecks. Meta has reportedly been offering seven to nine figure packages to top researchers from OpenAI, Google, and other major players. Some have already signed on. The pressure behind this move is obvious. Meta has been struggling to keep up. Internal friction, failed product launches, and the loss of top talent have all slowed things down. But Zuckerberg's vision hasn't changed. Since ChatGPT shook the industry in 2022, he's been pushing AI into everything. Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, even smart glasses. And now, with over a billion people using Meta AI every month, he wants the company back in the lead. This isn't Meta's first AI push either. Back in 2013, after losing the race to buy DeepMind, Zuckerberg launched the company's first dedicated AI lab. Since then, Meta's chief AI scientist, Jan LeCun, one of the godfathers of deep learning, has led research. But LeCun has a very different take from the rest of the valley. He's not convinced we're close to AGI. He thinks getting there will take a whole new approach. And now Zuckerberg's hoping that Wang will be the one to push that breakthrough. Scale AI, after all, was the backbone for data labeling used by OpenAI, uh, Microsoft, and others. They built the tools that trained the current generation of AI. Now Meta's betting that the same guy who helped others win the AI war might be the one to help them win the next round. And yeah, Meta's playing it smart too, with regulators already watching them closely. This potential deal with Scale AI is being structured carefully, possibly to avoid triggering another antitrust lawsuit. Now, what do you think? Have we officially crossed the line into something we can't turn back from? Drop your thoughts in the comments. Make sure to subscribe and hit like if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.